Hello, this is Chris from the inkslinger.co.uk and today I'm going to show you how to make a template for Apple Keynote. Uh, in fact, I'm going to show you how to make this template for Apple Keynote right here. Uh, this is a writing desk arrangement uh, with a sort of paper effect in the background, some nice leather corners, um, some editable things, so a title that we can put in and a, and a subtitle, which I'm uh, just going to call subtitle. We've also got a variety of different slides we could have. We've got some um, some bullets here, so I can have a bulleted list. Uh, something more interesting, if you can think of it. We've got uh, some nice effects here with some uh, sort of note paper effect uh, merged into the background, which we can add some text on top of. I've got another one with a um, different piece of note paper. I've got um, some pictures which we can we can change these. So if you didn't want to have uh, Batman, you can just replace the image. Okay, that's an image placeholder. Um, not entirely sure why I have the clown from it in my iPhoto library. Uh, we'll go with the seagull instead. Uh, or we could just have a blank slide like this, uh, which we can just do whatever we want. So uh, what we need to do is, let's just close this file down. We're gonna go with a new Keynote file, and I am gonna go with a standard, uh, you can go with widescreen if you want. Uh, I'm gonna go with a standard, just gonna choose the white presentation. Uh, the black or the white is the easiest way to go about it because otherwise you're going to be removing quite a lot of extra gump. We want to start with as, as blank a slate as we can. So we choose the white presentation and what I actually need to do first is go up here to the view button and we want to go edit master slides. Okay, this is what gives us all these various different templates. And actually what I'm going to do is just delete all of the master slides, okay? Uh, one slide currently uses this master slide, okay. So the title, it always defaults to the first slide as the title, I believe. So we'll just change that to the blank one, keep the blank one, but for the rest of them, we're just gonna delete them here, get rid of those. Uh, this isn't gonna affect the actual template itself. When you go back to the template chooser, the, the white blank template is gonna be unaffected by this. Let's just come up with a name for it. Um, I've already used writing desk because I've made it, so I guess we'll just call it um, writing desk the return. Okay. <clears throat> and so we're going to need a couple of things, uh, some images really. Now I've actually got a few images here which I've used for the for this template, for the effect. Now some of these I've just downloaded from Google. Uh, obviously the Batman pictures, um, I'm, I can't draw that well. The the scrap paper actually just did that on a, on a Google image search. Just be careful if you are doing image searches that you um, aren't just taking an image that you are gonna, you should really have to pay for. That's if you want to publish it widely. Um, the paper background and the blotter corner are actually made using Pixelmator, um, which if you don't have that, is probably the best 20 odd quid that you can spend, I, I would say, um, because it's it just makes, anyway, this is not a pixelmated tutorial. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is, first things first, I wanna get that nice paper effect on the background. So we can see here the master slide layout on the right hand side. We can add um, a title, we can add some body text, we can add slide numbers, uh, although you can't actually see, there we go, it's hidden. Um, and we can add some placeholders, but I'll show you a different way to do placeholders, actually. Um, I personally don't think this one has as much functionality, but I'm sure somebody will correct me. Uh, so I'm going to change the background, and I'm going to change it from a colour fill to an image fill, and it defaults to this. It's quite a nice slate pattern, to be honest. I kind of like that, but it doesn't look anything like a writing desk, so I'm going to go choose my file chooser here, tutorial resources, and the paper background that I've designed. Um, now, you could tile it. I don't really think this looks that nice when it's tiled, so I'm going to change it to scale to fit, which looks a little bit better. But to be honest, you do whatever you want. And then I'm going to get my tutorial resources here, and I'm going to drag my blotter corner in. And that is just 
ludicrously oversized. So let's just shrink that down to make it look sensible, I guess. And I'm just going to pop that in the corner roughly. Okay, I'm going to duplicate it. And for this second one here, if I go up to a range, I can flip it. I'm sure you know how to do all of this in, in um, Keynote yourselves. Take both of these, duplicate them, flip them vertically, and place them in the corner. Okay, notice I'm still just editing the blank master slide. Okay, that's that's all I'm going to do. In this slide, you just want to put your absolute bare minimum. So I may as well watermark this. And I'm going to use the font uh, Lucida Calligraphy because it looks a little bit more like um, a handwritten text. And I've chosen this nice sort of uh, nice blue, which looks like something that you might have in a bit of ink. Let's get rid of the underline on there. Now, what is quite important to note, let's place that down here. Let's maybe shrink that a little bit. What's important to note is that the um, any text that you add into the master slides here will not be editable when you want to actually use the the, the, the slides for your own purposes later on. Okay, so if I just show you that, if I go, I'm okay, I'm done editing the master slide. So this is now, this is my first slide. And any slide I add, this is the only one I got to choose from. Okay, at the moment. But I can't do anything with these. And I can't do anything. Ooh, oh yeah, there you go. The object can only be edited on the master slide. So that is basically watermarked into my presentation. Um, that's quite good for stuff that you just want to be there all the time, like my website, uh, or uh, and in fact these these images in the corners and the background image. <coughs> Can I change the background image? Oh, it looks like I probably could. That's okay then. Uh, so I'm going to go view. I'm going to go back to my master slides, and that is everything I want. So I'm going to start off by creating a title page. I'm going to just duplicate from the blank slide. I'm going to do this every single time. Okay, every every time I want to come up with a new slide, I'm going to just duplicate the blank. And I'm going to call this title and subtitle. I kind of want this to be my my default slide. So I'm going to if I click up here on the right the appearance, I can add a title and I can edit this now. Uh, so I'll change it to uh, my Lucida calligraphy. Um, get my nice blue. Uh, I'm also going to put a little bit of drop shadow on that as well because I like drop shadow. Uh, and maybe just position that up here at the top. And um, what I really want is to have, so let's just go um, out of here. So if I added a new slide with the here, so it's now renamed, double click to edit, and I can give it a nice title. Okay. What I really want, though, is to have um, the option to have a, an, an editable subtitle. So I'm going to go back into my master slides. I'm back into my title subtitle. And you notice on the right here, the appearance is no option to add any other text. You could try adding body text, but that gives you all of that, which is no use for a, um, a subtitle at all. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to add a text box. And I'm going to call it subtitle. I can spell that right and obviously set any styles that you want so change my font again change the color get my color wheel um, and I'm gonna position that where I want it to be so maybe about here um, I know what you're thinking you know if I come back out of the master slide it's not gonna be editable so what we have to do is go to select the text that we're looking for and I'm going to go up to my format menu on the menu bar here and I'm going to go down to advanced and select define as text placeholder. You could do this keyboard shortcut if you want but there's, when you've got that many buttons to hold down I can't entirely be bothered myself. Uh, so define as text placeholder and give it a tag, subtitle, 
And now, if I go back, this is now an editable piece of text. Okay. Um, whereas this isn't a text placeholder, so I can't. So that's nice. Okay, so that's my title, subtitle. Now, I'm going to duplicate this again. So I want to have that nice option to um, have some uh, slides with some images. So let's go with um, uh, note paper. And I'm not going to give this one any text, but what I am going to do is I'm just going to get my, what have I done with it? There it is. I'm going to get my, uh, my scrap paper, drag that in. And that is a little bit too large. So let's just resize that. Let's try and make it look realistic. I mean, this is meant to be an actual writing desk. So try and make things look roughly the size you want now. Nothing's going to be perfectly aligned. So I might do a little bit of angle that slightly. Now I've also got this image of a, of a drawing pin. That is just ludicrous. Uh, let's just shrink that down. Again, make it look realistic. Okay, there we go. So if I now come back out of the master slide and I want to add a note paper slide, this is, it's fixed, okay? It's like it's watermarked into the background. So that's really nice. I can add some text over here. Um, some text on the paper. Not sure why I capitalized that. Um, and there we go, okay, I can pop it on there can give it an angle okay so it looks like it's just coming off the edge of the paper anyway well that's going to upset me i'm definitely going to have to uh there we go okay so there's that let's go back out to the master slides and i actually had a different note paper effect as well so i had my smaller note paper And that one was here, a bit of scrap paper rather. Let's pop that in there and uh, let's put in the other drawing pin. Again, notice how the image goes over the edge. That's absolutely fine. Obviously that just anything that goes over the edge won't show up on your slides, but it's quite nice if you wanted to have any sort of effect of um, items which just appear to be disappearing off, off, the, well, off the edge, I suppose. Let's angle that a little bit. Let's shrink this drawing pin. Ah, it's a shame that one looks like a cartoon, really. It doesn't look very realistic. There we go, so roughly central. And actually, something which I have missed out is we had, under the title and subtitle, there was some body text as well, some bullet uh, bulleted list. So let's change that, let's have that. So what we do is we just, um, on the appearance, we check body. And I'm just going to, again, change, uh, set my font. You, it's a good idea to just get all of this bit done in your template so that you don't have to go and change it every single time you want to use your template. So, you know, I might want to position that there. And um, I'm also going to add a, a text placeholder, another one of those. Remember how to do that? So, placeholder and format, advanced, define as text placeholder. Let's change the style again on that calligraphy and blue and there we go to find it so we'll give it um, I guess a subheading uh, so that's nice so when I come out of the master slide there if I wanted to add one of those bulleted lists okay I can obviously change this subheading um, also, because that's a placeholder, I can move it around, which is quite nice. And then here I've got my automatic bullets. Um, again, you don't have to use bullets. You can do what you want with it. Okay. Let's go back into the master slide. There's also some pictures, and they were pictures that I could uh, swap out. Okay. Um, so we'll uh, duplicate the blank slide again. Pictures. And there we go. So a nice picture of Batman there, nice Batgirl picture there. So let's just get that into size. Now imagine 
if you are on your writing desk, had a couple of pictures of your family. Okay. You might want to find an image of some sort of a paperweight. I did actually have a look. Um, couldn't find anything really, so I thought, well, I just put the pictures on the desk. Again, note, if I come out of the master slide here and add a pictures panel, these are just fixed in place. Okay, I can't do anything with those. So we need to turn those into placeholders as well. So we're going to go back to the master slides. And just exactly the same deal, okay? So select a picture, format, advanced, this time it's uh, defined as a media placeholder. So you could actually, um, you could insert videos as well, uh, sound audio clips. Um, we're just gonna stick with images for now, defined as a media placeholder. And you'll notice that the uh, you get this little image down here just to remind you that it is a placeholder. So now if we come out, obviously I've already inserted this slide. Because it's now a placeholder, I can also move this it's no longer fixed in and you've got two different options when you want to change it you can either up here on the right hand side on file info you get the replace button when you do that it gives you the file browser file chooser um, and you can choose whatever you want or you can right click on the image and select replace image here and that seems to give you your iPhoto library I'm not entirely sure what the different, uh, why you get the two different options, um, but you have to go through different ways, it's just the way it is. Now, if I didn't quite want the face there, uh, you have to edit the mask, and that lets you just move, decide where the crop is gonna be, basically. So do that, centralize him, we'll leave Batgirl there. Um, and that is that for the master slides, actually. We've got everything we wanted there, so we've got the title, subtitle, We've got my bullet lists, and yeah, that's that was bugging me because the alignment was centered there, so now I've changed that to a left alignment. Um, we've got the notepaper one, we've got notepaper two, we've got a pictures file, and we've also got the blank, which we can do whatever we want there. So next thing we need to do, or the final thing really, is to get it into the, into the template library. So we'll select done there, finish the master slides. Personally, I would get rid of everything if you're going to be saving it into the template chooser so just sit there with your title and subtitle page we'll go save and we go file and save theme okay so we add to the theme chooser uh, we uh, get asked to give it a name so we call it um, writing desk return so now anytime you want to create a new writing desk um, file using that theme there it is all of my master slides are there and of course you can come in and edit these master slides further to personalize it to a, an, an individual project um, and the the beauty of, of the way keynote works is it won't change it in the template chooser so that one is fixed now but you can change these master slides so for example if you wanted to put a different website address or even if you wanted to remove that entirely um, you can change it in this version uh, go to the master slides and we'll just have that out or try to have that out remove well I'm not having any luck here let's get get rid of that cut there we go that was whew. Almost wish I hadn't bothered with that. Um, we can remove that and go done. And that is now, again, fixed for this version of the file, but not for the others. Okay. Um, and that's it. Okay, that's how you create your own Keynote template file. Uh, add it to the theme chooser. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video, found it useful. Uh, please head on over to theinkslinger.co.uk for more of the same uh, and some other things as well. Until then, goodbye.